Welcome to the bonus episode of the Process Automation Podcast from AVB. I am Fred Scott, maker, pyrotechnician, and engineering expert. And today I will be welcoming back Stefan Bazanach, who we heard from in our last episode when we asked the question, what will it take for industry to be powered by renewable energy? Now, if you haven't had a chance to listen to that episode, of course, I strongly recommend that you do. But today we are going to find out even more. So let's go. Welcome, Stefan Bazanak. Uh, now, first of all, in one sentence, what is your job at AVB? I'm the Senior Vice President for Process Automation Technology. Brilliant. You're in the right podcast. Uh, so in two sentences, could you explain how your job role feeds into the wider work that ABB does? ABB is known for automation and electrification, and I'm producing the products that we use in our product process automation business area. Nice. You are nailing this. Now, in three sentences, could you explain how what you do and it feeds into ABB and how that feeds into our everyday life as humans living on the planet? The link to our daily life is our customers that produce the products we use every day in our house, in our car, everywhere. So we help our customers with automation and electrification to produce those products you know every day. I think he might have even done that in two sentences. Stefan, brilliant. So um, now we're going to move on to uh, these two truths and a lie. So I'm going to give you three statements and two of them are true and one of them is a lie. Okay, up first, statement one. Integrating renewables into industrial operations always leads to inconsistent power supply, causing frequent interruptions and operational inefficiencies. Is that a truth or a lie? That's a totally lie. Oh, give us more. Because it's, it's all about physics. So the physics of electricity is known since uh, more than 100 years. Uh, and that's exactly the time when ABB or the former companies of ABB have been created. So we have grown with those development and usage of electricities in the next last hundred years. And uh, with our technology, with automation and electricity components, it's no problem to make this stable. Uh, we have so much experience, so much technology available, and it's required because otherwise your computer will be destroyed, your television will be destroyed, you can't run your plant. So it's, it's important that we handle it. There will be a change. That's also true. In the past, we had this, these large turbines, these large rotating machineries. And the, the large turbines with, with the massive amount of steel rotating, that's by itself stabilize the frequency. So this technology by shutting off the large power plants will be less important. And you have more of this dynamic wind turbines circling in a very fast way. So instead of one turbine turning, you have maybe 20 or 25. For us engineers, it's more or less another automation problem to be solved. But the solution is pretty clear. The mathematics is clear. So no no worry about that, that, that fact. Love it. It's in hand. You're working on it. So with that being a lie, we kind of know what the other two are. But in terms of the second statement, it's possible to combine renewable and traditional energy sources to power industrial operations. Interesting. So Stefan, truth or lie? It, it must be a truth. And it's more than a truth. That's exactly the description how energy transition will happen. It will be not one big event. And from yesterday, you have been using the old energy and tomorrow you use only renewable energy. It will be a stepwise approach. And stepwise approach is that per plant, per site, there will be an independent, a specific transition phase, how this is running. But fossil energy and electricity out of renewable energy will coexist for a long time the important part is that we always increase the part of the renewal, the portion of the renewable step by step. This is what matters, not the mix. Absolutely. Because sometimes as well, like it can be seen as like, oh, you're not completely using renewable, therefore why bother? But you're absolutely right. It's like just because you don't do it 100% doesn't mean you shouldn't do it 
80% of the way. And it's that working together with the different means that's going to be the real solution. And it's also, it's also in my view, a kind of thing you know from your psychology effect. So if you want to lose, let's say, 10 kilo weight, it's not that you talk about those 10 kilo. It's better to concentrate on the first half kilo and the next half kilo and next half kilo. And, and that's the same we need to do in energy transition. We need to start now. We need to do those non-regret investments now to get moving and not spend too much time on the last 5%, which will be difficult. Nobody is questioning that, that the last 10% will be the most demanding ones. But this is not an excuse to take the easy steps now as quick as possible. And this means coexistence is an important part. It gives us stability. It secures supply. Uh, supply of those materials our customers produce, you need every day. So we cannot interrupt it. We cannot go back to Stone Age for 20 years and then restart the new energy. We have to do that in transition. Absolutely, which leads us nicely, thank you, Stefan, on to the third statement. And I talk about this all of the time. Um, the first step into using renewables and industrial processes is the electrification of the processes. Hmm. Truth or a lie? Absolutely truth, because at the end on the physics, that's what we do. We, we stop burning fossil fuel and we use electricity from the beginning produced with uh, uh, wind farms, with solar and with other green technology. So I'm really looking forward those new electrical technologies that very often have been known for decades, but we never used it because fossil fuel was so cheap. And then the, the commercial equation was simple. Uh, this electricity is cleaner, but more expensive. So we stick to the fossil fuel. And this is now changing step by step uh, that the, the, the technology that is available, we know electricity, I mentioned that already more than 100 years, to make those technology now scale it up, make it applicable, available in industrial plants, and then we move forward step by step. It's coming into the time of electrification. And so ABB is right there, perfectly positioned to come up with these innovations. And as we are... <sighs> hurtling towards 2050, uh, which is coming faster than anybody wants. But it's an exciting time in your role, isn't it? And what are you looking forward to the most in these changes that are on the way? For me, uh, it's important to be part of that transition, to have the, to have the opportunity to be, be part of that in my role. I think here you can really contribute to the, to the society. You can contribute to something big. And that makes me proud to have the opportunity to do that. Uh, so I, I can bring all the experience I gained during my, my career in ABB. I can use that now, hopefully in the best effort to make this transition happen. And in terms of decarbonizing industries, when we come to 2050, what's the likelihood of that happening? Do you have high hopes for this? Absolutely. The technology is available, not scaled up yet, is available to make most of the processes net zero. There will be some where it's difficult, but there we will have uh, other technologies like carbon capture storage, where, where we catch the CO2 after it, it's produced and then store it. Or, and, and this is the circular economy perspective, reuse the CO2 because CO2 contains a very important chemical element, which is the carbon. So our phones, our computer, everything which is plastic needs carbon. And CO2 might be in future a carbon source. So if we catch it, we can then reuse it by producing plastics, for example. So this means when we combine all those things step by step, I'm absolutely convinced we, we can even in some areas get better than net zero, we get minus CO2. This is already known that we need to also catch CO2 to achieve our targets. It's not only avoiding, uh, because we will always have areas where we have to produce it. There's no way out. And for those areas, we need to get minus CO2 areas to compensate that. Brilliant. And this is happening now and it's going to continue happening. 
And that is it for the bonus episode. Of course, a massive thank you to our guest, Stefan Bazanach from ABB. I'm Fran Scott, and the Process Automation Podcast is a fresh air production for ABB. Follow now from wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. See you next time.